In this particular video, we're going to look at the Spitfire Audio Solo Strings Library, and in particular, the legato patch and how we write and program melodic phrases. So what is legato? Uh, legato in the context of a sampled instrument is how we most accurately create melodic phrases. And the reason why it's the most accurate way is because the patch itself captures the transitioning between two different notes. Now, to get the most out of a legato patch, and in particular these performance patches, we need to understand exactly how these patches work. Once we understand how they work, we can apply their strengths and techniques to the actual musical phrase. So that phrase feels more natural and it is performed by the library in a more natural way. So before we dive in, let's play back this extract. So the first thing that we need to understand is transitions. Transitions are the sample that exists between two different notes and they interpret the performer's change of note. Between velocities 1 to 19, we have the portamento transition, which is the player sliding between two different notes. We then have the fingered or the slurred transition, and that occurs at velocities 20 to 84. This particular transition is probably the most natural, and it is basically the way we would interpret a piece of sheet music that has slurred notation. Between velocities 85 and 127, we have the final transition, which is the bowed transition. When we then think about how we apply these transitions, it's not just about the velocity numbers. So you also have to overlap the MIDI notes in the MIDI data. So if we look at the two notes here at bar 13, we can see that they overlap and the velocity at bar 13 is zero, which means we're going to be triggering a portamento transition. Now, what happens when we don't have any notes before the transition? So for example, in bar nine, we have the starting note, there's nothing before it, no transition is triggered. Um, we have these things called attacks. The attack is basically how the note just starts. So if we were to have a velocity of zero through to 19 again, we would have a very soft attack, which is great for starting a phrase. If you were to have this at, say, um, 127, which, as we remember, that's that really aggressive bowing kind of change. Um, and I just very quickly turn up the dynamic. We'll hear that this is um, a very unnatural start to the piece of music. So with this knowledge of transitions and attacks, we know that when we're starting a phrase using a soft transition and a soft attack is a really great way to start a musical phrase. Now, whilst we're on the subject of starting the phrase, we can also hear that the overall dynamic is fading in as well, which is what um, the player would likely do in this piece of music. It's a very soft crescendo entrance to the piece. Um, that's controlled by CC number one or this modulation wheel. And as we can see, we're increasing this slowly uh, through the start of the piece of music. And that is basically just 
interpreting um, the player's overall timbre and dynamic. And it's important to continuously, throughout the whole melodic phrase, to be riding this control. So moving through the transition types, um, let's look at the finger transitions. So here in bar 14, we can see that there is um, a little fast uh, ornament or run, um, and that's all done with the slurred or fingered transition types. Finishing with the portamento transition. If we were to look at the bowed transition as well, this climax note in bar 15 would also be a really good place for the bowed transition. So I could change this from portamento to bowed, and I'm just going to smooth out the dynamics so we can hear exactly how that sounds. Now, what would happen in these middle phrases? What would happen if we made all these bowed transitions? Well, it would probably sound incredibly unnatural. Yeah, as we can hear, it sounds incredibly out of control. Choosing exactly where to apply these transitions is incredibly important. The next thing to consider with these performance patches is the fact that they also have samples that are not just long notes. They have short samples. So when we trigger a run such as this in bar 15 and 14, we can see that the, there are two different short notes. And programming them in this way means we hear more like spiccato or staccato based phrasing. So understanding that these short notes also exist allows us to program such a phrase in a quick way and a very accurate way. So the next thing to think about in this solo strings uh, line is the vibrato control. So vibrato is perhaps one of the most expressive techniques that a solo string player can uh, implement. So how do we go about using the vibrato control in the performance patches. So if we change to CC21, in the MIDI data we can see that that CC is constantly being um, changed over the course of time. However, what you will know is where all the drastic changes occur. So for example, bar 11, it's all timed on the downbeat. The reason for that is the vibrato control operates as a switch is either on or it's off and the reason for that is a vibrato control on a solo instrument cannot crossfade across the two samples without creating a phasing issue um, the phasing issue occurs due to the amplitude variation and the timing differences of the two different samples um, so we need to somewhat mask that on off point and picking a downbeat is always a really good way of doing this because it time aligns usually with something else that's happening in the music for example in this piece of music it's a piano chord so the vibrato control in the solo strings library on the total performance patch um, has quite a few different features if it's all the way at zero we hear a tremolo If it's above six, we hear absolutely no vibrato whatsoever. If we increase it past 32, we get progressive vibrato, which is where it starts out with no vibrato and naturally progresses into vibrato. And this is how we get around that crossfading issue as well. So we can hear there that there's very little vibrato and it gets slightly more aggressive as it goes throughout the sample. As we increase this, we then also get the um, very aggressive molto vibrato.
So understanding when to automate this control is also very important for accurately creating a realistic performance. So if we look here at the vibrato control for bars 14 through to 17, we can see that on the fast run where the fast notation is, we've got absolutely no vibrato whatsoever. And the reason for that is a string player cannot put vibrato on notes that are that short. But as we progress through and we get to bar 16, we hear that molto vibrato come in on the climatic point of this phrase. The final thing to remember about the vibrato control is uh, its relationship to the dynamics control. Um, as a recap, uh, dynamics is the control that we automate continuously using the modulation wheel um, or CC number one in order to continuously change whether the dynamic of the performance is soft and quiet or very aggressive and loud, so piano and fortissimo. Um, as we enter a change in uh, the vibrato type, so for example, uh, bar number 11 again, uh, we can see here that the modulation automation, the center lane, decreases just as the vibrato slider changes. This is because it's replicating the player naturally softening the pressure on the string just as they change that vibrato type. So that is another way to make the performance of the vibrato and the dynamics more realistic. The relationship between the modulation wheel and the vibrato control brings us quite nicely to um, a subject matter which is quite advanced in uh, programming realistic melodic phrases, um, and in particular with solo strings instruments. In every single sample library, if you hold down a long note, you will at some point get a loop. And that loop is the sample replaying itself. And if we're not controlling any of these other elements, that loop point is going to be really obvious. And in the case of a solo strings library, it's going to sound like the performer is basically re-bowing. So if I show you what I mean, um, I'll play a random note and we'll just listen without any further control. We can hear that it sounds like the library is rebowing when it hits the loop point. How do we get around this? Well, the way we get around this is essentially creating what are known as artificial rebows. An artificial rebow is changing the sample midway through the sustained note. Bar 16 through to 19 is a really good example. We have a long held note. So if I was to play this, on bar 17 you can see there is a duck in the dynamics modulation data and what that is doing is it is changing the sample from uh, a sort of middle-ish dynamic down to a sort of mezzo piano dynamic. You can also hear the same thing there at bar 20, so I'll play it once more. So if I was to not have these kind of performance changes midway through the sample, we would effectively get those loop points coming around, which is something that we really don't really want in a natural, realistic performance.
we can hear there that there is not only the sample looping, but also there is the performer doing their own rebo in the sample. So by continuously controlling the dynamics and the vibrato controls, we are changing the samples midway through the sustained note, thus not having the loop points or erratic reboing that we might not want midway through that note. The thing that's really quite important to remember when doing this in order to make it sound quite realistic, again, is as the player would do that rebo, they would soften their pressure on the string. So as we can see again in bar 17, as we're coming into that, the dynamics fader is slowly decreasing and then it's slowly rising again as the player starts to perform the fake rebo. Um, and that's really important. And it's always so good to time these when, you know, something else is going on in the arrangement. For example, the piano chords coming in here, because that syncs up with where a player might change their bow position midway through in order to trigger a second note. And if there is an artifact due to the position of the dynamics is also hidden within the rest of the piece of music. Before we finish this video, I'll play through the extract a couple of times and I'll also solo uh, the violin part so we can hear that in isolation and then also how it works with the rest of the piece of music. And if you follow the MIDI data at the bottom, we have um, at the very top, we have the vibrato layer where we can see the vibrato changing. We can then see where the dynamics is changing. Um, we then have the expression. I haven't really spoken about expression in this video, but to cover it briefly, this is just accenting the changes um, in the actual dynamics and also helping to push the phrase in places where the dynamics change might have just overall made the library too quiet so i'm keeping the mixing level up using expression um, and then at the bottom we have the um uh, velocities which is where we can see the attacks of the notes and we can also see their transition types when the notes overlay um, so that'll allow you to understand what is going on um, throughout this playback And then also with the uh, violin just soloed. If you have any further questions, please do get in touch with us at spitfireaudio.com forward slash support. Thanks for watching Spitfire Clips. Let us know if it was too long, too short, too fast, or too slow in the comments down below. Hit like if we answered your question and subscribe for more clips, tips, tricks, and exclusive Spitfire content.